Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of With Summit Fire. I'm Battalion Chief Don Nelson. Uh, we've been pretty busy the last couple of months, a couple of fires here and there. Most of you probably heard about the Magic Fountain Fire. Uh, that seems to be a pretty devastating event for the city of Summit. I know I miss the ice cream and I know my kids do too. Uh, more importantly, uh, about a year and a half ago or so, we actually started this program uh, under uh, Chief Houck's guidance. He thought it was a good idea to do that. Uh, he was one of our initial guests, and uh, we have some good news, good news and bad news. Good news for, for, for Chief Houck, bad news for the City of Summit. Uh, if you don't know, Chief Houck has announced his retirement. Uh, so we brought him back as a special guest today to uh, discuss his career and maybe get a little bit of what his future plans are. But I know he's pretty quiet, so that might be a tough one. So, Chief, welcome. Well, thank you, Chief. I, uh, I appreciate that, and uh, I am looking forward to retirement and to... Um the next chapter of my life, and I'm not sure what that's going to be right great, now. Great, great. Um, um, like I said, about a year and a half ago, we started this program. Um, was it something you had thought about, or somebody gave you an idea, or, or how did it come about? Well, I got to tell you, I got a call from Frank Masiosi, uh, former councilman and council president, mm -hmm. and um, I, I guess hometown television was astounded by the ratings of the police department show off the cuff with uh, Sergeant Martin. Yeah, they always have good ratings. Absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, and Sergeant uh, Martin is a natural, does an outstanding job. He does. And, um, and Councilman Masiosi gave me a call and said, why don't we try one for the, for the fire department? So the challenge was, who's going to do the show? <laughs> and it surely wasn't going to be me. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you were one of the first people that came to mind. And uh, I remember how reluctant you were initially. Yeah, yeah. And you said, really? Me? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, you never know how it's going to play out. And, and I was fortunate enough to be on the first show with you. And uh, for me, this is the last one. Um, but it was amazing how you were a natural. And, and there wasn't much of a script. You know, we have a little script today, that, you know, some cheat, some cheat sheets, but uh, for the most part, there was no script at all, yeah. and, and you really pulled it off. Thank you. You Thank were you. actually able to make me look good, which good, uh, good. is pretty tough to do. Nah, so, nah, that's not true. Uh, thanks for doing that. I know. My wife likes it because it's one of the few times she can actually change the channel <laughs> to get rid of me, so she likes it. Um, so anyway, back to you. Thanks for the, you know, we got the little info there about the TV show. Uh, you've been chief now since 2000, remind me, Eight. 2008. Um, but let's, let's go back. How did you end up, uh, you're, you're not a Summit person, you're from Newark, right? I am. How did you end up in Summit? Well, I, uh, I, I, I grew up in Newark and I loved growing up in Newark mm -hmm. and if I could do it again, I, I would do it again. As much as I love Summit and, and Summit is the home, my home now for my family and I, um, Newark was a great place to grow up. Um, so early on, I, uh, I was a member of a volunteer first aid squad in Newark, and I wound up working for the city of Newark as an emergency medical technician, and then uh, for University Hospital as an emergency medical wow. technician. And um, in the, uh, the mid-'80s, there was a, an economic crunch, similar to what happened in 2008, 2009, and the Newark Fire Department and the Police Department both um, had major layoffs and disbanded their emergency squads. Wow. So that, that group basically uh, did auto extrication, rope rescue, and all those kinds of things. And you know, I was enjoyed being an EMT, and I was one of those guys that was sort of toying around with being a police officer. So I never considered fire service. Right. Um, but working on the heavy rescue unit at University Hospital, got to do a lot of auto extrications. Um, we got to um, uh, do some training with the state police, Port Authority police, Newark Airport. So it was, wow. it was terrific, and I said, wow, you know, this is, uh, this is something a little different. <laughs> and um, around that time, I was still living home and my mom uh, moved to Summit. Okay. And uh, so I saw this as an opportunity to be a, a volunteer firefighter. Uh, so I started it as a volunteer firefighter here in uh, 2005. 2005? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're a little bit older than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 1985? Yeah. 1985, exactly. Uh, so I started in uh, 85 and um, Shortly thereafter, um, the Summit Police Department did a study uh, because they had uh, superior officers that worked as dispatchers on the desk. And uh, there was a study that, that sort of said we can probably do civilianize that position mm -hmm. and, and save a bit of money. So even back then, they were worried about the budget and all that oh, kind of absolutely. stuff. So budget. they've been pretty, pretty frugal over there. Absolutely. As Summit residents, we yeah, appreciate yeah, we that, do. right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, 
they were going to hire the first civilian dispatchers, four civilian dispatchers, and that would sort of be the stepping stone for police officers. Okay. So they would take um, the next police officers from that group. Right, right. And so I, be, I started at the, uh, at the Summit Police Department as one of their four civilian dispatchers oh, wow. in uh, 1986. Wow. And then, uh, being a volunteer firefighter, I took the test here in, um, in I think it was probably uh, either late 86 or early 87 and came out to the career division in 87. Good, so we came on in 87. Um, so you became a firefighter in 87. Um, when you were a firefighter, were there any uh, fires or calls that stick out in your mind? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, we, we, uh, I think about early on in my career, and I don't know whether there was a black cloud over our <laughs> platoon or not, um, but it seemed like we had probably six or seven major fires um, during my first year as wow. a probationary firefighter. So I got an awful lot of experience yeah. and, and really, you know, in, enjoyed, enjoyed the job and knew I made the right decision. Good. Um, uh, becoming a firefighter. Were there any uh, senior firefighters that, that influenced you when you were a firefighter? Well, I, I, had, I had quite a few mentors and... Um, uh, my first lieutenant was uh, Chris Cotter. Okay. Um, terrific fire officer. Uh, he continues to be a mentor of mine, mm -hmm. being the city administrator currently. And it, uh, as you know, he's retiring in yep. a, a couple of months. Um, but what a great group of guys we had. And I think about that seven-member platoon. Mm. And as, as Battalion Chief Wayne Smith was finishing up in January and when we had a little get-together upstairs for his last day, I said, boy, I'm the last guy from that platoon Okay. Still on the job. Wow. So yeah. um, that whole platoon is gone. But, you know, in those days, you know, the officers, you know, you, you respected the officers and did what they said. Right. But the senior man on the platoon sort of ran yeah. the shift. Yeah. So Mike Lonigan, who mm -hmm. was our senior guy, um, he taught me the ropes. He, uh, you know, we were accountable to Mike. Yep. But the, the guy just above me in seniority was uh, Wayne Smith. And uh, he really took me under his wing. Yeah, you guys and, uh, were pretty tight back yeah, then. Yeah, we, we still are today. Yeah, good, and, uh, good. But he really taught me quite a bit. So then, you know, you're a firefighter for a few years and you get promoted to lieutenant uh, in 1995. And we, as we know, when you go from being a firefighter to a lieutenant, you know, you're still a firefighter, but now you have uh, responsibility for those guys below you. Um, what, what, was, what was that like? What's the... I, I, everybody I ask that sits down in front of this camera, I ask them what the transition is like, and everybody has a little bit different idea, but what was your transition like? Well, I, I tell you, I remember the call uh, from the chief telling me that I was selected uh, by Council. Who was the chief back then? Uh, Chris. Chris Scott, okay. Uh, and uh, he told me, enjoy this, <laughs> because being a lieutenant is the best job in the firehouse. Yeah, yeah. And uh, reflecting now having served in all the ranks, um, he was so, so right yeah. because, you know, you're making that transition from a firefighter to company officer, uh, but you're still responding out the door, you know, with every yeah. call, every time the beefs go off, you're going yep. at and That's we're why all, we're here. That's what we're, we're here all, for. We're all type A personalities, <laughs> yep. Yep. you know, exactly. we want to go out the door. So um, I, I really enjoyed being a lieutenant. Yeah. Uh, almost so much that I almost didn't take the battalion chief's really? test the first time it was oh, wow. offered. Um, hmm. I really and truly enjoyed being I know I was on your shift for a few years. I remember going to the um, uh, tanker truck fire on the bend there on 24, or, or 20, the 24 bend coming into Springfield. I remember going to the Bell Atlantic fire. Absolutely. Where, where 41 Middle Avenue, whatever the, spring, whatever the uh, 41 Springfield, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, that was a pretty good one. It, it um, sure was. But, so then you go, then you transition from uh, lieutenant to battalion chief, and I think that was 2005. Or thereabouts? Uh, right? 2000. 2000, okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's when you make the big time. Now you're, now you're a, a you know, platoon leader, or your battalion chief. Uh, that transitions even more. All right, so we, you know, we know a little bit about that. Um, the big step, though, is from battalion chief to deputy chief. So tell us a little bit about that. Deputy chief does what? What's a deputy chief? The in deputy your eyes? chief is the, uh, the operations officer for the, for the department. So basically, um, as you will soon find out, yeah, uh, I'm trying to keep that quiet. To, well, <laughs> uh, you know, the council has announced that you'll be the next deputy chief yeah. of, of the Summit Fire Department. That's why I'm trying so to ask you what I'm supposed to do. 
<laughs> Thank you. But anyway, as the operations officer, you basically oversee the day-to-day -day operations. And, and you asked the question about the transition from firefighter to company officer. A little different, but the transition to administration, working straight days, yeah. um, getting a city cell phone and Thanks. being on call Keep rubbing it in. Keep rubbing it in. Is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is different. And you got to wear a tie now too, right? Yeah, long sleeve shirt. <laughs> long sleeve shirt as well. Great. So but, uh, no, that's it's it's fun, and and I was fortunate to work for um, Chief James Conley, mm -hmm. and and another great mentor of mine. Yeah. Uh, he really, really spent a lot of time, um, you know, training me as deputy chief, and um, you know, preparing me to be fire chief right. when he retired. Yep. Um, when you became deputy chief, uh, well, let me backtrack a little bit. You were instrumental in getting our first responder program going on in the city of Summit. Uh, for those of, for our audience that doesn't know what first responder is, we, we, the way I describe it is we help the first aid squad when they're busy. We go out and you know, stabilize the patient, and we do not transport. But in your opinion, why, why do you think that's an important program for the city of Summit? Because it's worked very well. It's worked really well. Yeah, it has. And there's a couple of reasons why, why it works so well. And one is we're fortunate in Summit that um, police, fire, and EMS all get along absolutely because uh, <laughs> uh, trust me in other communities yeah. it doesn't work that way um, and you know the first aid squad was experiencing some challenges back in uh, you know probably 90 uh, in the uh, in the mid 90s with membership mm -hmm. and it really you know coming from EMS the emergency medical services world it made no sense for us to be sitting in the firehouse why they're paging out and paging out and paging out mm -hmm. for a first aid squad and then eventually going for mutual aid. So, um, there, and while I was a piece of the puzzle, uh, there were an awful lot of folks that right. actually made that happen. Yes, the whole group. So yeah. we were able to I implement that in uh, January 15th of 97. And that was a big piece of business. Yes, you know, it was. Um, uh, the elected officials were very supportive because uh, as you know, when you, when you start a new initiative or sometimes put your foot on someone else's turf a little bit, even if it is to help them out or provide a better service to the community, which basically is why we're all here. Right, right. Um, it, so it, it, it really worked well. And there were firefighters that, you know, I didn't sign on to right, be a band-aider, right. as some say. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, I watch these guys in the field, as probably you do as well. Yep. I am astonished on yep. how well they provide EMS. And the great thing about that is, as you know, our guys, you know, provide primary patient care, package the patient, so when the first aid squad gets there, there's a smooth transition. Yep. yep. They put them in the truck and get them to the hospital. It worked. It, it's worked very well. You should be very proud of your of your role in that. It's it's, it's done a lot. I mean, uh, I was you know amazed at how well or how much it's progressed over the time. It's really it's really gotten very good. So, you're deputy chief, and then the call comes, you're going to be chief. And what year was that again? 2008. 2008. What was what was what was the first thought going through your mind when you got that call? Well, <laughs> that was kind of interesting because um, we had a promotional process, and uh, Chief Conley came back to the firehouse. He goes, "Joe, I got good news and I got bad news." <laughs> said, "What do you want?" And of course, I always want the bad news first. Right. He said, "You're not getting a deputy chief." And I said, "What?" He said. What? You ask for the bad news. The good news is you're getting promoted to chief. The bad <laughs> news is you're not getting a deputy chief. Wow. So you'll be, you know, Ooh. taking care of both both uh, positions. Um, and fortunately, um, uh, with the safety committee's help, we were able to um, make presentation to council and uh, restore the deputy chief's position and hold the process. And uh, and battalion chief Rick DeGroote was promoted to deputy chief. Um, shortly after. Yeah, now he's so been retired for what? Almost three years now, Rick. Yeah. Group, right? What was it like working with him? He was a uh, good guy. He was a great <laughs> guy. Uh, I, I often say, you know, one of the many things that we've accomplished here over the last, you know, many years is fire service accreditation. Yeah, and, big, I was uh, going to mention that. Uh, without Rick, um, that would have never gotten done here. So, uh, you know, he was a he was a terrific operations officer. He was, uh, you know, he was, when I got promoted to lieutenant, he got promoted to battalion chief. So we, uh, we worked together yeah, yeah. For, for quite some time. So uh, Rick was terrific and, and, and is still a good friend. Yeah, good. So you've, you've been chief for seven, eight years, give or take, right? A little over seven. If my yeah. math's right. Um, what do you think 
What have been the biggest challenges as chief, number one? And when you're done with that, um, what are you most proud of of being chief? Double bang question. Now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, the, the, the biggest challenge is as, as good as Chief Conley was with um, delegating mm -hmm. and sharing and having me involved in, in a lot of the process of being chief and what he was dealing with, you really don't know what that job is until you spend a little time in that office. Right. And, and that's the, uh, the words of wisdom I gave to uh, future Chief Evers because I, I, I tried to follow uh, Jim's model and, and share as much as I could with Eric. Um, but it is a challenge. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot different. You know, it's, it definitely is the biggest transition because basically, um, you know, you rarely get out of the office. And, um, you know, one of the things I can probably do better is to spend more time having coffee with the guys or having lunch with the mm -hmm. guys. That's but, not always um, easy, though. But the, you know, the, the chief's schedule is pretty challenging, right. and, and my motto has always been uh, I'll attend any meeting I'm invited to. So um, Eric will see that <laughs> there's some pretty interesting meetings yeah. he'll be asked to be a part of. I have but, a feeling I'll be involved in that. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a good opportunity to get the fire department face out there because, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's um, in, you know, we're, we're, firefighters are very good, me included about running out the door when the bell rings. Um, but the administrative piece, we always struggle, or at least I personally struggle with a bit, yeah. and always have. Um, but really, it was a transition, and over the last seven years, I've been able to, to work on that. Um, biggest accomplishment, uh, and um, as the saying goes, knock on wood, I have, I have seven days left, but I can say during my tenure that everyone that pulled out of this building on one of these pieces of fire apparatus came home at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's really our job, you know, yeah. Th exactly. Important thing. You know, um, you know, obviously our customers and, and, you know, serving the citizens of Summit are our most important job, right. um, but people are our most valuable resource. And, Absolutely. you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I worry, uh, you know, because we do have limited manpower, you know, mm -hmm. we basically have somewhere between 5.8 and 5.9 people on duty each day. I look for that point nine guy every day. I can't find him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'd love to say we can have 10 guys. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, we talked about uh, budget constraints. Yep. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. You know? So tell us a little bit about accreditation. I mean, you know, we, we were accredited uh, 2012 or earlier than that. I don't remember the exact year. 2011. 2011. Um, what? What's the big thing about accreditation? Yeah, I know, but if we can explain to our, our, <laughs> well, our audience, you know, we, in your we, words, obviously. You, if you ask any of the members of this fire department, they will say we are the best fire department in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you go down to Springfield, they'll say the same as they will in Milburn, and then they should have pride in their organization. Um, the Summit Fire Department could say that we had a group of peer assessors come in from around the country, take a look at what we do and say, yeah, these guys are the real deal. Um, they do what they say they do. Mm -hmm. They have documents that prove they do what they do. And, and the great thing about accreditation, uh, at least on the fire side, is it's a model for continued improvement. Right. So we're not terrific. I want to say we are, but we're not terrific. There's always area for improvement, and that's what we continue to strive for. Good. So that's the benefit of accreditation as yeah. far as I know. Now, and we're in the process of, the only way I can say is becoming re-accredited, if that's the right thing to say. Absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's a long process. It's not easy. We, we, we re-evaluate everything that we do here to make sure that we still meet our goals. Um, so here you are, 28 years and change later, sitting in front of hometown TV, uh, camera. If you had to do it over again, would you do it? Would Absolutely. you change anything? Well, I mean, there's always little things you could tweak. Um, you know, as I say, there's always things you could look at. Monday morning quarterback, uh, I could have done better personally. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I'm very satisfied with uh, with my career. It's it's been fun, and uh, you know, I, I, I haven't mentioned, um, but I surely should. Um, Summit is fortunate, and the Summit Fire Department is fortunate to have a couple of things. Um, we talked, we sort of joked about the budget, um, but the folks over matter. at City Hall <laughs> and the elected officials have done a, have done a real good job mm -hmm. uh, supporting the fire department. They have. Uh, 
there, there are not many fire departments. You know, I'm, I begin uh, my leave on uh, May 20th is my last day. And May 26th, all the positions are being right. filled from all the, chief the ladder, yep. all the way down to probationary firefighters. So I commend the, the, the council uh, for doing that. And, and one of the things that, that we're pretty fortunate here with is, um, you know, we have a pretty good um, labor management relationship. And I, I feel fortunate during my whole tenure as chief, Lou Vecchi was the FMBA president. Right. And, and Don, you know, I oftentimes come up with some wacky ideas. Mm -hmm. And I'll uh, agree with that. Lou, <laughs> Lou has always been good about saying, really? You think that's a good idea? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I follow through and, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, we, we talk about it some, but at the end of the day, we get to a good place. So uh, we're fortunate, you know, I'm fortunate and the department's fortunate to have Lou's, um, you know, great leadership. Yeah. Now, some of the things I didn't talk about were your, your, your accreditation that you have. Uh, you just recently got your bachelor's degree, right? Uh, you were a member of the uh, National Fire, or you are a member of the National Fire Academy's Executive Fire Officers Program, which is a pretty big deal, uh, I understand, in the fire service. Um, what is, what is that, what's that really involve? I mean, <laughs> well, as, as, as um, you know, you have kids. Um, life can easily get in the way of, sure. of education and training. Absolutely. And, and when I started as a firefighter, you know, back in 87, uh, I wasn't able to go to, anyway, uh, go back a little bit further. I wasn't able to go to college right after high school. Mm -hmm. um, it probably wouldn't have worked out anyway. I wasn't probably mature enough to make that happen. But uh, I went back to, uh, to Union College when I became a firefighter to pursue a fire science degree. Mm -hmm. And, you know, got married, had kids, and all those kinds of things, yep. and never got back. But an incentive for me is, in order to get to the Executive Fire Officer Program at the National Fire Academy, you need a minimum associate okay. degree. So that's what forced me to go back and get my associates in 05, get into the Executive Fire Officer Program, and that's a, you know, that's a pretty rigorous four-year program. And then, um, you know, go through that, which was a terrific opportunity to network with yeah. firefighters from around the country. So. For four years, you spend two weeks at the fire academy. Oh wow! Which is which is terrific. And the, I've been there a few times. And the easy <laughs> part, um, but then each year you have to write an applied research. Uh, oh, I know that project. Um, um, about that relates to one of the courses that you took during that year. So one, you know, one of the papers I wrote about was uh, a combined dispatch center. Imagine that. Lo and behold, that'll be <laughs> it. Will be transitioning. How long were you working on that? Not not the paper, but the combined dispatch. How many years have we been working on that? September will be nine years. Wow. We're working on that. Long so time. Talk about shared services. It takes a little it bit does. of time. It does. But, but it's finally coming through. Absolutely. So hopefully, it works out well. But yeah, I mean, it's it's the program was great, and then. Um, um, during my annual performance review, Chris would, uh, he, he was always good about asking me what your personal goals are and department goals. And mm -hmm. I always said, oh yeah, I'm gonna you know, pursue that, uh, that uh, four year degree. And the year after he'd say, how are we doing with that four year degree? <laughs> and finally I said, you know what? I gotta get it done. Yeah, you, know, you have before, to, you just gotta do it. You know, I, I, I wanted to get it done before my first daughter graduated college. That didn't happen, but I did get it done uh, well, my second daughter's graduating in a couple of weeks. More so importantly, they they went done. through school and they're out. So you did Absolutely. your did your dad duty. That's good. So, um, so again, like I said, here we are, twenty eight years uh, twenty eight years later after you started. Um, if a firefighter turns on TV or hometown TV three years from now, and they're watching this program, what words of wisdom do you have for them today that could possibly help them in the future? What do you, what do you think? their goals and, and, and moving forward, their aspirations as firefighters and the department, what do you think, what do you think they should be striving for? Well, as a, as a, as a new firefighter, learn your job. Mm -hmm. um, get as much training as you can, um, spend as much time down here on the apparatus floor, because as you know, um, training is, is, is a vital piece of what we Absolutely. do every day. And, you know, we sort of, t you know, there's a, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. And, um, you know, we're, we're pretty good about going to fires and car accidents and medical calls. 
But I worry about those low frequency, high risk right. type of incidents, you know, confined space <coughs> incidents, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yesterday the crew had to respond to the uh, to railroad tracks for a man down on that's, the tracks. Yeah, that's Again, unusual. you know, that's 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 the type of call we don't always go yep. on. Yep. You know, we've had some confined space incidents. It's terrific that we, we train jointly with Milburn mm -hmm. on, on those types of incidents. But really, not just to know what we call our bread and butter type responses, right. but really go out, you know, once you get the job of pumping, you know, being a good firefighter, uh, you know, there's opportunity to go out and learn rope rescue mm -hmm. and, and all those kinds of things and, and work on your formal education if you're interested yeah, in being an thing. officer further on. Yep. Because again, as you'll see going into the administrative world, it's less running out the door right. and, and more, uh, you know, working on, uh, on data to justify yep. what we do here. You know, again, we, uh, you know, every year we have to present a budget, mm -hmm. we have to present a capital plan. We can't just say we want it. Right. We have to be able to justify right. it. Yeah, that's, that's the, I think that's the tough part. Um, I heard when you retire, you're going to work on your golf game. You and I are both lefties. I'm pretty bad. I don't know about you. But my golf game is horrible. So if I see you on the golf course, should I be wearing a hard hat, or should we, or will I be okay? <laughs> well, I look going into golf. I, I can't get any worse. That's true. You know. So yeah, the hard hat's probably a good idea. Good. Yeah. I, when I go on an 18-hole golf course, I usually end up playing nine because I always drive my ball onto the other fairway and just play through. Um, Chief, you know, it's it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, I know you only have seven days left to go, so. Uh, you know, I'll see at least two of those days. Um, I don't know, thanks, I don't know what else to say. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Well, Don, it has been a pleasure. And um, you know, the, as I mentioned, the council last night announced the new promotions mm -hmm. that will take effect on the 26th. And with the leadership of, of uh, Chief Evers, yourself as deputy chief, and, and the other folks getting promoted, I see the fire department <laughs> just continuing to soar. So good hope we luck. Can look, hope we can live up to your standards. It's uh, going to be tough. Yeah. No, no, you guys will Chief, be... Uh, thank you very much. Chief, I'm sure you. I left something out, but good job. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.